Okay, welcome Susanna and Lexia Stefani, Rigni and uh, Fanui and Sarah and Adam and Diego. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, let's jump right to the quiz. So the quiz says, determine if the following series converge or diverge. Be sure to state the theorems you're using. Okay, so we got this, we got the first one, which is the summation n equals one to infinity of two n plus five over three n plus four to the n power. So the very first thing you should do on any of these series is get a strategy. What test do you think will be the easiest test to use for this particular um, series. Yeah, this is, this is tailor-made, custom-made by me for the root test. Whenever you have a n is something to the n, um, root test is pretty much always the way you want to go from there. So let's use the root test. And the root test says what we do is we take the nth root. So I'm going to do the following. I wonder if it'll let me. I don't think it lets me copy and paste. I'll do an arrow, I guess. Oh, I know I'll do. Edit equation. I can copy in here, I think. Now I can go to insert equation. And what the nth root test says is I take a limit. As n approaches infinity, of the nth root I'll just put n next to the root to say it's the nth root of the function uh oh sorry it's being mean to me Uh-oh. Well, I think I need to start over. Sorry about that. Hmm. All right, one more time. Tech issues happen. Okay, so here it again, I think I'll do it without the equation editor. So we can take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root. So I'm just going to write nth root of the function, which is 2n plus 5 over 3n plus 4. to the nth power. And the good news is, what is the nth root of anything to the nth power? Yeah, it's just a function. So that is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of just 
2n plus 5 over 3n plus 4. Because the nth root and the nth power cancel. And now if I plug in infinity, I get infinity over infinity. So does that mean it doesn't exist? Yeah, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. What does it mean I need to do at that point? Or the easiest way in this case? Yeah, L'Hopital. So we can take the limit as n approaches infinity of, and now what we can do, because we got infinity over infinity, is we can take the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and you get 2 thirds. And the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 thirds is just 2 thirds. OK, now by the nth root test, what can we conclude? What's the important thing about the number 2 thirds? Yeah, 2 thirds is certainly less than 1. So that means by the nth root test, the series converges. OK, and you can say absolutely. You don't always bother with absolutely when you're talking about positive stuff anyway. So I'm just going to write it converges. It does converge absolutely, but if you don't have any negative signs, someone really cares about absolutely. Any questions at all about um, part A? OK, and sorry about the tech error. I have no idea what happened. It just froze on me. OK, let's go to part B. So part B is now we have the summation n equals 1 to infinity of n plus 1, 2 to the n over n factorial. So what test on this one? Again, I always want to strategize. First thing is to strategize. Yeah, this one's a ratio test. Um, the root test would be a bad idea. Nth root of n factorial is not pretty. OK, you, you would just sit there going, uh, what to do now? So instead, um, anytime, just about any time you see a factorial, ratio test will be the right way to go. The only time when sometimes ratio test isn't the easiest is when the um, divergence th test is easier. But this one doesn't obviously you know, not go to 0. It looks like it might go to 0. So we're going to use a ratio test. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity. And now, if you remember, we're going to take a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, which is the same thing. And I don't, I'm not sure if Bruce talked about this a lot, but whenever I do ratio test, I don't think of a sub n plus 1 over a n. I think of a sub n plus 1 times the reciprocal of a n. That's almost always easier. Any questions on that? OK, I don't know why it's giving this edit equation thing all over and over again, but it is what it is. So we're going to do is we're going to take a sub n plus 1. And again, a sub n plus 1, that'll be an n plus 2, 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And then we're going to go times the reciprocal of a sub n. And that's just going to be n, plus, that's going to be n factorial. And then divided by n plus 1 times 2 to the n. Any questions on the? Um, Any questions on applying the ratio test? Any questions? OK, so now what I like to do, I don't know if Bruce talked about this, but this is what I like to do. I like to go limit as n approaches infinity. And then what I do is I group. 
I kind of put, put the like things together. So you'll notice in this equation, we have an M plus two on the top. We have an M plus one on the bottom. So let's put those together. Okay, and then we have a two to the M plus one on the top and a two to the N on the bottom. So I can write times two to the N plus one over two to the N. Okay, and then on the bottom here, I have an N plus one factorial. And on the top, I have an m factorial. So then I can go times n factorial divided by m plus 1 factorial. Any questions at all on this guy? Let me see if I can do something. I keep saying edit equation. I want to get rid of that. No, that didn't work. Still wants me to edit an equation. I don't want to edit an equation. Okay, so now what I can do is I can simplify. What is two to the n plus one over two to the n? The hint is it's very easy. Right, two to the n plus one over two to the n is just two. So I'm gonna copy and paste. I guess I should put equal signs in here all over. And the two to the n plus one over two to the n just becomes two. How about n factorial over n plus one factorial? What does that become? Mm, close, it's not n over n plus one. Good try though. Yeah, it's one over n plus one. Because notice, I like to just, you know, put a number in there like five. Five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. Where six factorial, five plus one is six, would be six times five times four times three times two times one. And everything cancels except the six. So similarly, everything is gonna cancel except the n plus one. So then I can just say that this n factorial over n plus one factorial is just gonna be one over or over n plus one. Any questions on that? Put a parentheses, there we go. Almost there. Lots of choices at this point. If we want, we can do a little algebra and we can write this as two n plus four. And then we have an over n plus one squared or over n squared plus two n plus one. Now what can I do? Hint, if I plug in, I get infinity over infinity. Yeah, now I can use L'Hopital's again. Derivative of two n plus four is just two. And the derivative of n squared plus two n plus one is uh, two n plus two. But now I'm in great shape. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of two over two n plus two? Yeah, that's zero and zero is less than one. So now by the ratio test, I'm gonna write RT. So I'm not sure if Bruce kind of talked about this. Um, with the root test and the ratio test, which is the more useful? Which is the one that's going to you see a lot more than the other? 
Did Boots tell you? Okay. Yeah, I would say that on a scale of one to 10, on 10 being most useful for, for uh, tests, I would call um, the ratio test a 10. And I call the root, root test maybe a one or a, maybe a two. Okay, so root test doesn't come up much once in a while. Ratio test comes up all the time and we're gonna see that today. Um, so good, I'm glad that, that Bruce told you that the ratio test is more used. Um, not just more used, it is really more used. So I'm gonna use RT in this class to mean the ratio test. Whereas if you have the root test, just write R-O-O-T for you know, root test because that won't be used as often. Uh, as we'll see today, ratio test is gonna be used pretty much in every single convergence that we see for the rest of the class, rest of the course. So by the ratio test, these series converges. Any questions at all on the quiz? Any questions? Okay, if there's no questions, I think I'll move on. I'm gonna hit submit quiz so I have it forever. Larry, I was curious about um, if we arrive at uh, with the point where we have to use L'Hopital's rule, um, I'm sure it's better off to put it in there, but if you didn't put infinity over infinity, like, are you gonna take off or is it that like necessary? I, I won't take off, but time. if it isn't infinity over infinity is L'Hopital's rule, then it's wrong. Hmm, okay. So that's why you always wanna at least do it in your head. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whereas first quarter, I would have taken off points and kind of the way I do things, and I'm not sure Bruce is the same way, but when you first learn it, you need to show every little step. And then any following quarter, I just assume you know how to do it. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so for example, if you take me for, um, I don't know, um, spring quarter next year, and you do a U substitution with integration, I'm not gonna make you show U equals. Does that make sense? Whereas when I, I actually you didn't have me last quarter, but Bruce probably made you show U equals whatever, DU equals whatever, right? So right, yeah. that, that's kind of my philosophy is that if it is, if it's coming from a prior term at which you've proven that you already know the stuff or you went to past, then, then I let it go. If it comes from this class, so you need to show the steps. Okay. And by the way, I didn't write infinity or infinity. I said it, but I didn't write it. <laughs> okay. So I'm just as faulty as you are in that one. But again, it, otherwise we'd be here all day long doing everything else. <laughs> okay. So let's go to what we're doing today. Are there other questions about anything? And let me... Let me remind you what's a, what's happening on Friday. Our presentations of calculus applications. Exactly, presentation of calculus applications. Very different day. Okay, so first thing, no quiz. Got it. So Friday is going to start out. I'll probably just introduce everyone and talk about the rules and stuff like that. But the point is, is that you're not going to be taking a quiz from um you know from 8 35 to 8 55 uh is just presentations okay so we're doing presentations and that's really it so friday's a very different day than um than regular days it's kind of weird it's been weird lately you know last friday was bruce instead of me different day so today's like our only normal day <laughs> and then monday was a nothing day it was a i don't know about you guys traveling backpacking whatever um and then today is a regular day. And then we're back to weird on Friday. And then Monday will be back to normal again. So just let you know in terms of, you know, what's coming up. And, but the presentations are really, really important. And you definitely want to practice with your partner or partners um, and make sure that, you know, you've got this down. You know, five minutes is the goal. If you do six or seven, I'm not going to kill you. Um, at 10, I'll probably cut you off though. So in other words, don't go an hour. Don't even think about it. <laughs> so, you know, a little more than five minutes is okay, but not, but not too much more is the idea. Um, so presentations are going to happen. And that is, you know, it's, you get some nice points on that. 
if you if you really you know work on it and practice and make it look good with PowerPoint or with slides or whatever you're doing, um, you'll probably get a good score on it. On the other hand, otherwise you won't. Did I say five minutes? Yeah, I said five minutes, but if it's a if it's a couple minutes more, that's okay. And then after that, there'll be Q and A time. Yeah, that's all in the syllabus too. But um, so it'll be that, and then it's Q and A time where your classmates ask questions, and then you answer the questions. Okay. And it's going to be with really the one class where I'm not lecturing, you're lecturing. <laughs> okay. I'll introduce you. But that's about it. You know, but but you're lecturing it. And again, this is one, this is the one day you have to be there live because it's a live presentation. So you're going to be, you know, going on Zoom and you're going to be sharing your desktop. I'm not sharing my desktop. Very different. Also, um, Unless you all want it, um, I'm not going to record it because by law I can't make I can't record when you guys don't want me to record when you're like talking. Okay, see chat boxes chat box is not part of the recording, so I can do that. Um, if I'm talking, I can record, but if you're talking, I can't um, unless you all like you know sign up for it. So just now it's going to be a very different day on Friday. So any questions at all on the presentation? or on anything else. Any questions? Okay, and I will let you know, I do have office hours after class. I have office hours in the evening tomorrow. I'm around checking email a lot. Um, so in between now and Friday morning, if you have more questions, um, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you out. Um, there's also tutors, by the way, they can help you. Oh, one more announcement, I almost forgot, um, that the elections for student government are happening this week. So, you know, I recommend you, you know, you vote, you go to the college website, you can find the election stuff. I don't know if any of you are running. Have any future college, you know, student presidents and, but it's a good thing. I don't see y'all jumping in. So maybe not, if you're running, you'd probably say something so you get, so you could win. Okay, but anyway, can't hurt to vote. It's always a good thing. Okay, if there's no questions, then I think I'll move on and talk about the new material. Okay, and it's, I don't know if you realize, but the last few weeks, we haven't done anything that we've used. Have you noticed that? Have I given you any applications? Right, if you think of the last few weeks, all this, you know, series and tests and all that kind of stuff. Right, I've done a lot of math, but can you remember any applications? Yeah, none, none. So we're moving, okay? In, we're moving on to the next chapter and this chapter, now you're gonna get the point of this all, okay? And the purpose of it, okay? And let me, let me just kind of ask you some things. What if I asked you, the following, okay? Or maybe say a lot of Bruce asked you because he's the one that taught it. Just something very simple kind of, <laughs> e to the x squared Okay, what if last quarter, you know, it was integration. What if you had to integrate this? Integral of e to the x squared dx. Who knows how to integrate this? Looks pretty simple, right? Did Bruce talk about this particular one? Okay, so what he probably told you it wasn't doable. Okay, he probably told you it wasn't doable. And 
That's not quite true and not quite false, okay? So the answer is it's not doable by anything you have learned. So there is no use substitution or integration by parts or partial fractions or anything that you learned that will make this work. You can't do it using any of the procedures you learned with integration. So does that mean you give up? And the answer is no, okay? The answer is you don't need to give up. What you need to do is you need to hang out with me for about a week or two more. And we're, we're gonna be able to do this integral, okay? By the way, this integral important. In fact, I'll even throw a, just for fun, throw a negative there. That doesn't make a difference in terms of doable and not doable. Does, is this integral important? Does it ever come up? Okay. Yeah, it is one of the most important integrals or most important functions there is for me. What's the other class I teach? Do you guys know the main class that I teach? I teach multiple sections of the other one and then one calculus statistics. Have you heard of the normal curve or the normal distribution? This is a normal distribution. And if you want to find probabilities under a normal curve, this is what you have to do. Okay. And it's evil because you don't know how to do it yet. So what we're going to be doing over the next week or two is we're going to be able to integrate anything. Okay. We're going to be able to integrate anything. There's a cost, but we're going to be able to integrate anything we want. And that includes the normal distribution. Okay. Curve. Okay. There's a one over the square root of two pi I didn't put in here, but that's basically the normal curve. So I wanted to kind of, you know, let you know the purpose of all this. And the way we're going to be doing something like this is we're going to say, well, I have this function. Can I write it as a series? And the answer is yes. And then once I write it as a series, it's a very easy integral. So the, the cost is you have to write functions as series. And then everything you learned, all the hard stuff with integration, you don't need anymore because you can do everything really easily. All you need to know is the power rule. That's it. And everything else was useless. But you have to do series, which is often much, much harder than not having to do series. So that's just a note. That's the big deal. So let's go ahead and I'm going to give you the big definition of the whole chapter. And that is called a power series. Okay. So the summation n equals zero to infinity of Cn x minus a to the n is called a power series centered at a. Okay. It's a power series centered at a. Um, you don't actually have to start at n equals zero, but that's pretty standard. I know most of our um, series that we've had in the last chapter started at n equals one, but I mentioned you know, more than once that it's not where you start as much as where you end and we end at infinity. So you're used to seeing this go up sum to infinity. What's new when it comes to power series? What's the piece we haven't done before? So what's new in this definition? Why is this different than the, the quiz that you just did, which was a series and you got to find out if it converged. So what's different? You wanna see it? Yeah, it's a function, but in particular, the why is it a function? When you see all this stuff here, what tells you that this is a function? Yeah. 
Is it the exponent? Mm, no, it's not the exponent. Good. It's the x. It's the x. Not the n. The n's not important. The x makes it a function. That means we got something to plug in, right? With a function, it's f of x, right? You got to plug in an x and you get out a number. So it's the x that makes this a function. All the rest of the stuff is extras. They're important, but they're extras. But the x makes it a function. Okay. So this is called a power series because the n right here, the power, the nth power is why we call it power series. Okay. Just to note, there are other series of functions like this that aren't powers that we're not going to do in this class, but I figured I should mention them because, you know, we're at the point of talking about these functions that look like series. And the next most important function that looks like series isn't going to have an x minus a to the n. It's going to have a sine of nx or a cosine of nx. Okay. And those are really, really important. Okay. They're, they're series of sines and cosines. But the ones we're doing in this chapter are power series because those are the easiest. But the sines and cosines are actually really important too. And uh, sometimes that's a Laplace transform type thing. I'm not, I'm not gonna get involved in all the details, but let you know that you'll get into those in your upper division math classes. But for this class, we're gonna be looking at this right here. And there's a power series centered at A. And the reason why we center it, we call it centered at A if X is A, what do you get? <coughs> yeah, this was a trick question. <laughs> this is a trick question, okay? I knew you'd all say zero, okay? If X is A, you'd be very careful because there's an issue here. And it's kind of part of the definition. I figured I should mention it. If X is A, you get zero to the N. And you may think zero to the N is always zero, but not always. When is zero to the N not zero? And this you learned in um, first quarter calculus. Remember? Yeah, if n equals zero, you get zero to the zero. And it's kind of undefined, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of it as a limit and we're gonna call it one. So just a note, let me write another note. I'm gonna write by convention because that's really what it is. By convention at x equals a, the series is defined as just C naught. So by convention, we're going to call zero to the zero one. And that's just what everyone does. So that's just a big note. Any questions on this? And by doing this, I know it, it looks a little weird, but by doing this, it just saves a lot of writing. And it's not just me, but everyone does it this way. Okay, so this is a power series and it's centered at A because when A equals zero, it just becomes so nice. You don't have to worry about anything. It's just C naught. But every other number, like if, if X equals, you know, A plus one, then this becomes a summation n equals zero to infinity of just cn. If, if x is a plus two, it would be a summation n equals zero to infinity of cn two to the n. And you'll see we get these series. So for any value of x, except x equals a really, you get a, you get a series. Any questions on the idea of this definition? Okay, again, it's what we're spending the rest of the course on. So that's why I'm stopping for a while talking about it. The power series is a function from R1 to R1. If I plug in an X and then do the series, I get a number because a series gives you a number 
or undefined. Functions can be undefined, okay? But everywhere it's defined, that's where the domain is. So the idea is power series or functions. Any questions on that? Any questions? So maybe I'll just give some examples just for fun. So I don't think I have it. Oh yeah, I do have an example. Okay, so an example is summation n equals zero to infinity of n over n plus one squared, x minus four to the n. Do you agree this is by the definition a power series? Any questions on that? Okay. All right. Now, a much harder question would be, well, we know this is a function. That's what power series are. Do you think you could graph this function? Right? It's a function. You know, y equals f of x. So what you want to be able to do is everything. <laughs> you want to be able to graph the function, evaluate at any value of x, you know, maybe take a power of the function, take a derivative, take an integral. So we have these functions and we'd like to be able to do everything that we know how to do with functions. Any questions on that idea? The, these functions look differently, but they're functions. And you can talk about all the same things that you talked before with functions that, you know, in, in algebra and calculus, we can still do it. Any questions on that? Okay. So now comes the big definition slash theorem. Okay. And that is first the summation n equals zero to infinity cn x minus a to the n is a power series. So I want to basically I'm just restating the definition. And here comes the theorem. One of the following, and let me write down um, even better, exactly one of the following must be true. Number one, the power series converges at x equals a and diverges everywhere else. So notice if x equals a, of course this converges because the power series is just going to be C naught plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero forever. So of course it converges. So X equals A, the power series always converges. But it could diverge everywhere else. Okay, we could also have the power series converges everywhere for all values of X. So there are power series examples where no matter what value of X you plug in, you can do a convergence test and it converges no matter what value of X you've got. And then the third is that there exists an R greater than zero such that the power series converges for any X such that X minus A in absolute value is less than R and diverges for every x such that x minus a in absolute value is greater than r. And r is called the radius of convergence of the power series. So a couple things. If we know, if we know this, do we know for every value of x whether it converges or not? What do you think? Have we answered the convergence question no matter what X is? Okay, I think so. Think again. <laughs> yeah, so the idea is what if X is A plus R? If X is A plus R, then A plus R minus A is R. Absolute value of R is R. And R is not less than R. And R is also not greater than R. 
So this does not tell you every value of x. It tells you every value of x, except when x is r, I'm uh, sorry, when x is um, a plus r, and also when x is a minus r, because you're taking the absolute value. So this gives you almost everything. Any questions on that? Okay, and again, R is called the radius of convergence. Now, um, here's a question I have for you. When you think about radius, what do you think about? What geometry do you think about? A circle. You think of circles, right? Is this a circle, x minus a in absolute value less than r? Doesn't look like it. It doesn't quite look like it because this just sits on a number line and it's just gonna be a little line segment, right? Any guess on why we call it the radius of convergence then? And the hint is it is a circle if you think about it differently. Any guess? Because there is a reason. It wasn't just some dumb, um, you know, label for something. Uh, parametric representation, well, it's still one variable. It's kind of a distance. Okay, but no, one, no one's come up with the, with the reason. There is actually a reason. And it's something you haven't thought about in a long time. Most of you, Polly. Okay, so let me tell you. If x is a complex number, so that would be like, you know, a 3 plus 5i kind of thing, then x can be graphed in the complex plane where you have the real and the imaginary as the axes, and then it really is a circle. So when, when you get past calculus, okay, when you, when you get further into math, then you're going to deal with this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, x is going to be allowed to be a complex number. And then it truly is a radius of a circle. So we're not going to do that in this class. But I figure I should mention it because it does have the word radius. And the, that's the reason. The reason is when you get more advanced, you talk about complex numbers. And then in the graph, it really is the radius of a circle. OK, again, you don't have to understand what I just said today, but maybe in a couple of years you might when you take your upper division courses. But I figure I should mention that. Any questions on this big theorem? Any questions? All right, so now that we have the theorem, now we wanna say, well, there's three choices, right? How do you know which is the one that's the right choice for a particular example? So the idea is what's a strategy to decide which of these choices it is. And I will tell you, I can give you an example where the example has number one true. I can give you an example where the example has number two true. And I can give you an example where the example has number three true. All of these can happen. So what we wanna do is we wanna come up with a process. And here comes the big process. Maybe I'll write it out. for finding the radius of convergence. Okay, that will almost always work. And it's very simple, but I wanna highlight it, bold face it, because you're gonna be using it pretty much always. And make it bigger. And that is use the ratio test. So as I mentioned um, at the end of the quiz, the ratio test is the big test because anytime you wanna find a radio, radius of convergence, just about any time, you're gonna be using the ratio test. Occasionally you can use root test, but I'll let you know if the root test works, the ratio test almost always works also. It really doesn't matter. So I kind of gave you 
an example where you could use a ratio test. Okay, sometimes the root test is easier. But basically, if the root test works, the ratio test usually works also. So here's some examples. Find the radius of convergence or state where it converges. Okay. So we want to find the radius of convergence. In fact, let me just say find the radius of convergence is easier. All right. So take a look. We have n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n, x minus 1 to the n. OK. OK, maybe I should say or state where it converges now that I think of it. All right, how do we do this? What test should we use? For part A? Yeah, we can use a ratio test. So just use a ratio test. Okay, so what we do is we take a limit. I'm just going to write limit. Actually, it has a limit, so I can just use it. And goes to infinity. And what we do is we put the n plus 1 on the, on the top. So we have 2 to the n plus 1. x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n x minus 1 to the n. What's wrong with this? If anyone can tell me what's wrong with it, there's something wrong with it. Other than it's too small for you to see. There. So what's what's wrong with what I did? It wasn't a ratio to start. You don't have to have a ratio to start. That's not a problem. Okay, so that's not an issue. There is an issue though. It's technical, but an important, a really important. You don't see it? Okay, maybe I'll tell you then, because we need opposite values. Because when you're doing the ratio test, you're taking the absolute value of the a sub n's. And notice if n is uh, if x is zero, this is a negative one to the n, and those could be negative. Okay, every other one is negative, so you need to have the opposite value. That is important for the ratio test. But the good news is this is pretty easy. What's 2 to the m oh, 2 to the m plus 1 over 2 to the n? Yeah, 2. So I get 2. What's x minus 1 to the m plus 1 over x minus 1 to the n? Yeah, it's just x minus 1. I'll put over 1 because it's easier to type, but you can get rid of the over 1 if you want to. So it's just that. And that is equal 
to the absolute value of 2x minus 1. And we want that to be less than what number? According to the ratio test? Yeah, I want it less than one. So now we got a little work to do. Basic algebra, divide by two. So we get x minus one. I'll write it on the next line. So the absolute value of x minus one is less than one half. Any questions so far? So our radius of convergence is one half. Any questions at all on the radius of convergence? And it's centered at one. Any questions? Okay, what about part B? The summation n equals zero to infinity of n factorial x minus one to the n. What do we do? Yeah, same thing, ratio test. So we take the limit as n goes to infinity. And again, the numerator and denominator. The top, we're going to have an n plus 1 factorial. Then we're going to have an x minus 1 to the n plus 1. And the bottom, we're going to have an n factorial. And then we're going to have an x minus 1 to the n. Any questions? OK, so that, again, we can simplify it quickly. Not too bad. Limit as n goes to infinity. Notice that the uh, n plus 1 factorial over n factorial, that's just n plus 1. And x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over x minus 1 to the n is and by the way, I do need absolute values. I want to make sure I have those in there. So times the absolute value of x minus 1. That needs to be less than 1. When is that less than 1? One over n plus one. Okay, so x is a number. Can't have n's. What value of x will make that less than one? So x is not a function of n, x is a number. Negative one, you might be close. Zero doesn't work. One, that's the one. Because if x is one, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 is certainly less than 1. Anything else x is, this is going to go off to infinity. So this, the power series, diverges everywhere except at x equals 1. So notice that we're in part one. Okay, this is an example of number one. Is we converged at x equals one and diverged everywhere else. 
Any questions on these examples? All right. Now comes a big definition. So let's suppose that f of x, just leave the n out. Um, well, I didn't. I took a limit as n went to infinity. And the idea is if x equals 1, then this limit equals 0, which is less than 1. If x is not equal to 1, the limit is infinity, which is greater than 1. And that's why I'm able to answer the question. Does that make sense? So I didn't leave it out. I actually used it. OK, I plugged in x and then took the limit. OK, so next is the big deal. And that is this big definition. So let's, again, let's consider the power series of function of x. Of, so f of x is summation n equals 0 to infinity of cn x minus a to the n. And that's a power series. And let's suppose the radius of convergence is r. Then the domain of f of x is called the interval of convergence. OK, and it will always either be a minus r to a plus r, including the endpoints, a minus r to a plus r, including the right endpoint, but not including the left, a minus r to a plus r, including the left, but not the right, or a minus r to a plus r, not including either of them. So that will always, it'll always be one of the four. Okay. So domains are important. We want to be able to say, what is the domain of this power series? Okay. You learn in, the, in algebra, you spend a lot of time talking about the domain of a function. Well, here we are, we got functions. And what we're basically going to do for the rest of the class is we're going to say, we got this new idea, this new kind of function that we haven't played around with before. So now let's do all the mathematics on functions that we know how to do. And one of the things we know about is functions have a domain. So how do you find the domain? And the domain of a power series is so important that there's a word for it or a, you know, see we, words for it. And that's interval of convergence, which is the same as saying the domain. Because a power series, you can talk about it converging or diverging. If it diverges, you don't get a number. You get infinity or something worse. If it converges, you get a number. And the definition of domain means that you plug in and you get a number. OK? And if you're not in the domain, it means you plug in and you didn't get a number. So that's why domain and interval of convergence are the same things. Any questions on this definition? Slash theorem, I guess. Any questions? By the way, I didn't mention it. Since I got a few minutes, I can probably do it. Is why is why is this theorem true? I didn't talk about it, but it, it's kind of obvious actually in a way. Any thoughts? So something that, that one of the tests, what test for convergence makes this theorem true? So you got like a, what, one in 10 chance or so? I don't know how many tests we've got, something like that. <laughs> Geometric. It's a good idea, except that the CN could be really math messy. Like it could add N factorial and it's not geometric anymore. Good try though. Okay. I think I'll mention it then. The direct comparison test. So the idea is once, once you know it converges at a certain value of X, if you get closer to A, you're smaller. So if you converge and you get smaller, you still converge. That's the direct comparison test. If you get... If you know it diverges and you get farther, that means you're bigger. And if it diverges and you get bigger, then it still diverges. And that's why there's a radius convergence because once you hit that radius, anything less than that by the direct comparison test is gonna converge. Because once you converge, you still converge. 
when you get closer in, okay? Because you get smaller. Whereas once you diverge, if you get bigger, you still diverge. So the, the, the proof of this is, I'm not gonna write all the details, but it's just a direct comparison test. Any questions on an idea? Okay, so now that I said that, now we can do the type of problems you're gonna have to do. And let me give you a step-by-step -step process. So here's the steps of finding the interval of convergence. Step one, use a ratio test or occasionally a root test, but almost always a ratio test to find the radius of convergence. Then use a test or tests that are not the ratio or root test for the left endpoint, okay? By the way, if you're at a, an endpoint, the ratio or root test will always fail. Don't use it. Okay, number three, use a test or test that are not the ratio root test for the right endpoint. And then step four, write down the interval of convergence. Any questions on the um, strategies? Okay, so let's do an example or two. And that is find the interval of convergence for, let's start out with the summation, n equals zero to infinity of x plus two to the n over n plus one. How do we start? What's the first thing we should do? Ratio test, that was step one. So that means we're gonna take a limit. Let's take a limit as n approaches infinity. And then again, we're gonna have an n plus one instead of an n for all this. So we're gonna have on the top x plus two, uh, you know what we have to do first? Absolute values always. And then x plus two to the n plus one over n plus two. And then times the reciprocal of the original. So we're gonna have an n plus one divided by x plus two to the n power and then n the absolute value. And that's equal to, we have a limit as n goes to infinity. And again, you rearrange it. Hopefully you can rearrange in your head. What is x plus two to the n plus one over x plus two to the n? Yeah, it's a x plus two. And I'm gonna write it as the absolute value of x plus two. Any questions on that? But the good news is that n plus one over n plus two, what does that go to as n goes to infinity? Mm, not a half, good try. Use L'Hopital's rule. Hopefully we can do that in our head. Let's take the derivative quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's one. Derivative of n plus one is one. Derivative of n plus two is one. That's just one. I'm not gonna write the one, but I'm gonna say the one. One times the absolute value of x plus two. And that needs to be less than one. So the radius of convergence is equal to one, the endpoints are, 
What are the endpoints? What values of X is going to give you are going to give you one? So what values of X will give you one? Some usually you can do it in your head. Yeah, negative one will do it. Any others? The hint is there is another one. So if we plug in one, negative one, if we plug in negative one, you get one. What else can you plug in to get one? Negative three, good. So our x equals negative three and x equals negative one. Any questions so far? So now let's read, we're on step two now. Use a test or tests that are not the ratio and root test for the left endpoint. So in this case, our left endpoint is negative three. By the way, how do I know the ratio test will fail? How do I know for sure that that would be a complete waste of time? Yeah, because that was the whole point. That's when it equals one and the ratio test fails when it's one. So don't even think about using the ratio test. Instead, let's plug in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in X equals negative three. So instead of an X, I'm gonna put negative three. Any questions on that, on plugging in? What's negative three plus two? Yeah, that's negative one. All right, now this should just scream out at you. N equals zero to infinity of negative one to the N over N plus one. What test do you think we're gonna use? Hint, not ratio test. <laughs> yeah, it's an alternating series. It's just screaming to be an alternating series. So let's use the alternating series test. So let's take the limit. as n goes to infinity. Uh, the absolute value of this, which is just one over n plus one. And what is that? Yeah, it's zero. So by, oops, made it a b. by the alternating series test, this, the power series converges at x equals negative three. Any questions on that? Okay, now we'll go on, let me remind you. Step three, now let's go to the right endpoint. So we're gonna go to the right end point. So for the right end point, let's write this in. Instead of negative three, we're gonna plug in negative one. What's negative one plus two to the N? So it's negative one plus two to the N. Yeah, what's, but what's one to the N? <laughs> you can do better than, than one to the N. What's one to the N? For any N. So 
So let's wind to the end. Very simple. You're all supposed to know that one. <laughs> one to the n is one. <laughs> one to the n is one. One squared is one. One cubed is one. One to the eighth is one. Doesn't matter. One times one times one times one. All right. Take a look at this series. Do you recognize it? The summation n equals zero to infinity of one over n plus one. Um, ah. One to the infinity is always one, but something that gets close to one to the infinity may not always be one. Do you see the difference? But this truly is just one. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, so if there's like weird stuff that had some ends and stuff and you ended up with one with some weird, you know, doings that you have to be careful, but here's just one to the end. What series is this? Series, hint is it's easy. Yeah, it's harmonic. So by harmonic series test, the power series diverges at x equal negative uh, x equals negative one. So therefore, the interval of convergence is so now we're going to include negative three so square bracket negative three and we're not going to include negative one so parenthesis uh, one negative one parenthesis and that's my interval of conversions any questions on this okay i think i'm not going to do b because i only have so much time but i wanted to make sure i did one in full Okay, and you always follow the steps. And again, sometimes you get converges at left, sometimes you get right, sometimes both, sometimes neither. You never know until you do it. Okay, now comes a biggie, and that is called the geometric power series. So we know what geometric series are. Now we can talk about geometric power series. So now what we can do is we can say, if we have a function that looks nice in a certain way, then we can find a power series representation for that function. Or in other words, a power series that is the same as a function as that function, at least in a certain domain. So here's an example, first one. Find the power series for f of x equals one over one minus x squared. And these are easy if you understand it. So we know the geometric series. So let me remind you, maybe over here, the geometric series is Hopefully you remember the summation n equals zero to infinity of a times r to the n is equal to, who remembers what it is? So who remembers the formula? So what's a geometric series, summation n equals zero to infinity, a times r to the n is, Don't see y'all jumping in. It was a formula we had a while back. It was a over one minus r. Does that ring a bell? 
Hopefully it does. So the idea is if you have a function that kind of looks like that looks like a over one minus r with different letters, maybe we can turn it into a series. So for this first example, one over one minus x squared, what is that going to give us? It's going to be a summation n equals zero to infinity. You're going to have a fraction. What's a in this case? Yeah, so a, oops, actually it's, it's no fraction. Sorry, that was a mistake. So a is one. So I'll type the one, even though you usually don't need the one, times, what's r in this case? And all you have to do is look at it. Yeah, x squared. So we're gonna have x squared to the n. And I could write that a little nicer. Certainly don't need the one. Hopefully you all know that. n equals zero to infinity. of x to the 2n. And there's our power series for this function. How about f of x equals 4 over 3 minus x? What do I do with that one? What's wrong with this one in terms of trying to make, trying to say is it the same as a over 1 minus r? What's the issue? Yeah, the three, but we can deal with it. And the way we deal with it is the following. It's tricky. A lot of tricky algebra. And that is you can factor out the three, pull it up as a top as a one third. And I can rewrite this as four thirds over one minus x over three. Do you all agree that, that really, they really are equal? So I divided top and bottom by three, basically. And now, once I have that, I can say now I have a geometric series or a geometric power series. So that's equal summation n equals zero to infinity. And now we have four thirds. And then we're gonna have X over three. To the N. And by the way, that is equal to I think I'll start there and redo it. It's going to be four times x to the n over three uh, to the n minus one. Oh, sorry, n plus one. There we go. Any questions on that? Just simplifying it. Okay, I'll do part C, I don't have time for D. I wanna do part C really quickly. And for that one, notice A is X cubed and R is negative X. So now for this one, I can write down the summation, N equals zero to infinity. of x cubed times negative x to the n. And that is equal to 
the summation n equals zero to infinity of, I can pull that negative out and I can write that as negative one to the n, make it look like an alternating series, times x to the n plus three using the power rule. And I just wrote down a power series for this function. Okay, I don't have time to do the last one, just a note. For the arctangent of x, we use the fact the derivative of the arctangent of x is one over one plus x squared. And then you find the power series and then you take the, take the integral. So I'm not doing that because we don't have time, um, but we'll get to that later, another day. So I'm going to stop the share and stop the recording.